Well, good, good morning, good folk. Welcome back to the dining room of the 1925 bungalow. I'm Scott. Look at that dining room table. Let me tell you right now, everything that you see is available for sale in the old curiosity shop. That's the eBay store. And these auctions are running live right now. Of course, if you watch this video a month from now, hopefully it'll all be sold. Actually, my auctions only run for seven days, and um, I believe I posted all of this yesterday and also today, so you've got, you know, a few days if you see anything you're interested in. Let's zoom in and take a look at what we've got, but before I do, let, let me remind you kindly, I've been selling on eBay for 25 years, and the link to my eBay store is in the description box below. That's right. Now, there's a whole bunch of Barbie clothes on there, too, if you're into that. We'll have to do some more Barbie clothes reviews later on this week. Come on over here and look at this beautiful English dinnerware, transferware. Now, it's not flow blue, not really. If you take a look, it's not really flowing. And I don't know what color that is. It's a bluish color gray color actually yeah and all of this dinnerware dates to the 1890s uh, that you see here it's all the same pattern and we'll take a closer look at it but quickly we've got a covered a beautiful covered butter dish we have two different size serving platters a uh, lidded cream and sugar and two matching covered vegetable dishes. Good grief. How did it all survive? Well, that's one of the beauties of living here in the great old Northeast, up here in the old 13 original colonies. We got a lot of old houses and a lot of old china closets that are still full of this. Take a look. We'll zoom in on it. Oh my word, just when you go to grab yourself a little three bean salad, you get decorations on the inside as well. Now let me put this lid down. Oh, where am I gonna put it? Well, I don't want you to see where I'm putting it or you'll scream at me. Look at this. Look how pretty this is. We'll turn it upside down and we will let you see that we have Grindley, Grindley, H.W. Is it H.W. Grindley? I forget. And it's hard to read it while you're filming. Um, it might be W.H. Anyway, it's English. <clears throat> and I've got all these pieces, as I said. Now, look over here. This is interesting because then we have U.S. patents. And I'm not really sure. I don't know my history on this. Hold on for a second, dear folk. Here we go. Made in England, so exactly why there is a USA patent on there, I don't know. December the 29th, 1896. Someone who's educated in this will be happy to tell me below in the, in the uh, comment section. But there we can see uh, that it's patented in 1896. But here we can clearly see that it was, it was, it's got an English back stamp on it as well. So, um, you know, Victorian era uh, porcelain and pottery is not my specialty. But I couldn't resist when I found all of these pieces because of the con condition. You will be shocked to find out that there's only one item here that has any damage at all. The rest of it is perfect and there's no crazing on it. Um, the only item that has damage is the sugar bowl. And the lid has a little chip on the top, nothing terrible. And, but the sugar bowl is cracked. Now it's, this is pretty thick, uh, I guess it's porcelain or dinner. Um, I don't know if it's porcelain or not. It might be. No, it might be earthenware or what is this? Well, anyway, it's cracked and that crack has a stain in it. 
it goes all the way around. It's tight. You can still use this. Um, I've thumped it with my finger a few times and it's still pretty sound. You know, this might even be bone china. Well, anyway, we'll put this lid back on, which is kind of strange. The lid is the right size and everything, but it's a little wonky. See that? So that, that just may be just the way that it was made. Um, that might have been a lid off of a teapot and it got substituted and placed on here. I don't know, but you can see it just doesn't quite sit in there as nicely as you'd like it to, but it'll keep the ants out. All right, all those pieces are listed separately. Um, and you can find other pieces in this pattern. This is still somewhat of a mystery and we're not gonna go into it any more than that. We, we fiddled around with this uh, quite a bit. The only other example, I did find one other example. No, I tell a lie, I found two. One example had it listed as a sewing kit and the other one as a first aid kit, but you will recognize that as the pattern of those old oven X baking dishes, loaf pans from the 30s, right? This one has a lid. Now this was manufactured this way. It's not stamped oven X. It's not pressed into the metal, but I've got these loaf pans. In fact, I've I've baked in them before, but you can see that it has a handle held in place with grommets and it's got an old clasp on the front. This isn't, you know, Uncle Henry didn't take this down into the basement and turn it into a sewing kit for Aunt Hazel. This was manufactured this way. So um, it can be whatever you would like it to be. I, um, yeah. No, it was, it was not meant to close the lid and stick it in an oven and, and cook with it. I had a couple people make that suggestion, and I don't buy that at all because of the way that clasp is and so forth. Um, there's some, as I said, competing information about this on the Internet. And since I can't find anything that is definitive, right, with proof, we're just gonna say, hey, it's really cool. Made in France is this little elephant lamp. It doesn't have its glass globe that it would have had on it. So you'll have to figure something out. Now I know there's at least one person really interested in this and interested in this, and I think it's Ron. Ron, I hope you're watching. I'll send you an email and let you know I've got it up and listed. You're gonna have to rewire it. Oh, I love this old plug. Look at that. And the on-off switch here. Yeah. Um, it's not spelter, it's a nice heavy piece of metal and it's got not broken or anything. All the old patina is worn off of it. But you'll have fun finding yourself a little tiny glass globe to put on the top of that as a shade. And that's gonna go back. That's a figure old lamp, dates to about 1930. Sometimes these little lamps were called radio lamps for obvious reasons. Hazel Atlas Modern Tone punch cups, that's what these are. I've got two of them. There's a turquoise Dalton teapot. Beautiful. There's a blue willow teapot, unmarked, probably made in the USA in the 1940s, something like that. Back here is a German um, a chocolate pot with four cups and saucers. There it is. Kind of in a nouveau style, probably dates to, uh, well, it certainly dates to somewhere within the first 25 years of the 20th century. It's a very nouveau looking handle, but this was probably made after the Second World War is my, my guess would be on that, or at least right around that time period. When the spout is way up there at the top like that, it's for chocolate. Look at that cocktail shaker, that is going to do super fantastic when it sells because this is not an easy thing to find. It's a Manning Bowman made in Connecticut and it's an excellent condition. Everything comes off, although I'm not gonna be able to do it with one hand, I don't think. So you'll have to just look, no, okay, so that comes off, the strainer is under there. You'll have to look at the pictures 
<clears throat> online. This also comes with these um, with black stripes. I don't know that it was any other color other than black and red, but this is not easy to find in this not easy to find in any condition. without certainly this one without any dents in it uh, rust or any splits in the metal this is an early depression pattern by hawking it's called banded rings and sometimes it's painted you'll find it with painted rings on it but this was what they had um hawking had before it was anchor hawking and it has platinum bands on it now i have a cream and a sugar I have a center handle tray, as you can see. See? Now these all have the, the platinum around the, the rims, the edges, and a wonderful big old pitcher back here. And I think this pattern might have come out in the, actually in the late 20s. And, um, so that's, I found all of those pieces separately, kind of been holding on to them for a while. And then back here is the Mildred pattern by Mount Clemens. We're familiar with that. You could buy it at Woolworths <laughs> in the late 20s and into the 30s. And it's still a popular, it's still popular with a lot of folks. I've got five cream soups, which are very difficult to store because they don't... <laughs> or stack rather, they don't sit on top of each other very nicely. But there they are, they're in good condition with no chips, cracks, crazing, or stains. Also in the Mildred pattern, I have eight um, dinner plates, and I believe those might be eight inch plates. They're either eight or nine inch, I can't get my hand down there to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so these are all listed. Oh, I forgot these over here. Look at these champagne glasses. Are they hawking? Are they hazel atlas? I think they're one or the other, or one of the two, and I hadn't seen them before. Um, something about that base down there is giving me more of a hazel atlas sphere feel rather than anchor hawking, but Look at the painted rings uh, on these with an, uh, a paneled optic design. I love these. That's Depression era all the way. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's see here. We've talked about this beautiful piece of glass back here, which I still think is American made. And um, What's so unusual about it is this, we see a lot of open lace, but look at the chain link around here. I'm loving that. It's got that little yellow tint. It's a nice console bowl and it has a polished bottom. See there? So we know it was made by one of the companies that actually did some finishing work on their glass. Someone said it reminded them a little bit of the colonial knife and fork, and I can see that. Of course, it's not Colonial Knife and Fork, but um, I don't know. This could be Imperial. It could be Lancaster. I don't know. I do know that it's a nice, what, 10, 11 inches across, and it's a pretty console bowl. But the star of the show to me today is this Color Craft Art Deco vase back here by Brush McCoy. Now, the McCoy history and the brush pottery, boy, that's a fascinating thing to study. Uh, the brushes and the McCoys got together and then they and then they split up for a while. There was a line called Color Craft. And um, I don't remember the years, but obviously we're late 20s to early 30s on this. I bought this when Vintage Vinny and I were in, ooh, Adamstown maybe a year ago, and I got a good deal on it because it was marked as damaged. Now, I showed this to about four or five folks, and they were actually all in agreement 
that we've got a glaze skip down here rather than a chip. Now I'm going to show it to you. Hold on. And we're going to focus in on it. Talk about it. Actually, let me go over here and sit down. <laughs> and then I'm going to insert some photographs and um, you be the judge. But I say it's a glaze skip and I am sticking to that. And I'm going to tell you why I think it is a glaze skip rather than something that happened after it came out of the factory. Now, let's get it down here where we can see it. Okay, we're coming all the way down to that boop boop a doop right there. Let's zoom in on it. Looks like a big old chip on the bottom of that to me. Well, let's look at it again. In fact, let's set it up right here. Hold on, I know I'm moving around a lot, but I want you to notice Look at the way the glaze gathers in a dome shape around the top. Do you see the, See how the color, look at that, see that? Mm -hmm. That is one indication. The other indication is if I flip it up this way, I can see clear glaze on what looks like a chip. Now let me lie this down on its side. All right, don't roll off the table. Okay, now, I'm really going. See here where it looks darker, right there where my fingernail is? That, I believe, is a little area that was chipped. That little spot to the right. But this big section here, right here, where my finger is covering, I believe that happened in the factory and the glaze gathered around the top of it. So this would be a factory imperfection. You can even see the, the two different colors here. This, this, this darker spot there, which I do believe to be a small area that might have been chipped, that doesn't have any glaze on it at all. Whereas this is very, very um, much lighter in color and almost a little shiny, like it's got like a, just a glaze, like a glazed donut. And you can see the way the glaze gathers over what would be uh, an indentation that probably occurred in the factory when this pot was being made. That's what I think. And I'll insert another still photograph so you can see possibly even better. We'll stand it back up. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's going to knock some collectors out. Look at that again. All right, let's zoom back out. Okay. Now, does it take too much away from the beauty of it? Not really. You can see it a little bit from that side, but you know what everybody does. They're gonna just say, well, turn it this way. And I think the glaze is even more exciting this way. And that little imperfection is on the back. So, a piece that would normally sell for way over $150. Now I've got it listed at auction. And I think I started the auction out at maybe 49 bucks. If you're interested in it, you might be able to actually get it for less than what you would pay for a perfect example. But because I believe this to have happened in the factory during manufacture, I'm not saying that it was damaged after the fact. Okay, that's it. Let's turn this back around. Color craft starts with a K. Um, and that's a, and look how beautiful the glaze is and so modern, so modern for, we, you know, the American market didn't, didn't flip over this deco stuff the way the Europeans did. Not quite as much. We tend to like our chrome and our streamline, but, um, that's a pretty piece and somebody's going to have it for their own collection. Well, back, back, back up. Let you see everything again. Okay, I'm still working, I'm still listing. So hop on over to the old Curiosity Shop eBay store, yeah? And of course, this is a little easier for me now because um, 
I can just pack a few items per day and have it all ready to ship out as soon as the auctions end. All right. Now, I may or may, what was I going to say? I may possibly be back uh, for a live sale on the first Monday night in February. I just might be because I've got some assistance. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I'll let you know, but uh, don't you fret. I know I haven't had live sales for a few days now, possibly the first Monday in February. We'll see. But hey, I want to thank everybody for watching. What was your favorite item? What did you like? What, what have you seen before? What have you never seen before? I really love the elephant lamp. The, oh, you know what? I might as well just stop. I love it all. <laughs> I love it all. Thanks for watching, everyone. It is Friday. So you have yourselves one heck of a weekend. I hope so. And I'll see you later. This is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching. Wait for the cat. And so long for now. Bye-bye.